Hey, welcome on in. It's another Photoshop tutorial with your boy. It's Mr. Kern. Um, we are back at it today. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be working on our um, selective color project. So what I want you to do is I want you to open up your photo. Uh, I'm going to go in. I'm going to hit open here. And I am going to open up this photo right here. Okay. This one I found on Unsplash. This one's not my own photo. This is uh, Matthew Hamilton did this photo here. Okay. Um, we're going to wait for it to load up. There it is. So there is my photo. So I'm going to move my video here. I'm going to move on up. Um, what we're going to do here is we're going to highlight a certain portion of it. We're, we're going to view selective color to have a certain portion of this photo in color and do black and white for the rest of it there. Okay. And what I've decided is I, I like the sunglasses. I like the sunglasses, the bold coloring there of the brightness of the sunglasses. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you a couple different ways to do isolated color or do selective color to isolate those objects and create a little black and white for everything else. Okay. So first thing that we're going to do, I'm going to zoom on in. And what I want to do is I want to use my quick selection tool. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use my quick selection tool to select these sunglasses. Okay. You can see with the quick selection tool, you have that little plus there. Add things in. I'm going to zoom in a whole bunch. I want to make sure that I get all of this gold here as best that I can. And again, you can change the size of your brush. Get a smaller brush in there. If you're looking for a cool shortcut to change the size of your brush, if you hold down the Alt key and you hold down the right mouse button, you can slide from side to side to quickly change your brush size. I'm going to be using that quite a bit today. So I'm going to keep on adding in. And again, you can hold down Alt to take things out of your selection. And I'm going to change my brush and I'm going to I want to select the entire sunglasses there. Take things out. And I don't want the skin here. I'm going to take that out too. There we go. I'm going to get a little bit smaller brush. A bit too small. If you go down to like a one size brush, then you're just doing one pixel at a time. That's not quite what I'm after. Okay. I'll make my selections. I think that looks pretty good. Okay. So once you have your selection where you want it, what we want to do next is we want to do a black and white filter. Okay. And you can do that over here, your adjustments layer here, uh, add an adjustment. We're going to choose black and white. Okay. And you'll see what that did there. Oh, I got a window that popped up over here. What that did there is it made the sunglasses black and white because that's what was selected. And what we want to do, we've done this before is we're going to click on our layer here. And if we hit control I, it does the inverse. So it flips everything. So everything else will become black and white. Those will stay in color. So control I flip that mask. There we go. Okay. All right. Now also on your black and white uh, layer here, you also have these options that pop up. Uh, and what these options do is they affect your black and white uh, your black and white adjustment layer. So you can actually change this. It says modify influence of reds in the resulting black and white. And so if you slide this, it'll change everything that's red uh, or a hue of red in that photo that was red, I guess I should say. You can darken it or lighten it. So I'm going to darken this up a little bit. Same thing, yellows. You're going to play with that just to get that black and white right where you like it. You can see there's not a whole lot of green. There's just a little bit there at the hint in the trees there, a little bit in our hair there too. So play with that. Only scion that's showing up is on the cars. So it's not really going to do a whole lot. And then blues, again, only on the front of that car. You can actually see it as I slide it back and forth. Not a whole lot happening there. Okay. So there we go. That is a quick and easy way to do this. Now, what we can also do, if we see any errors that came through, let's say we were a little bit sloppier in our selection of our um, object, 
we can come in here. You can click on your mask, grab a brush. Again, you can hit your default colors here or hit D on your keyboard. So you get your default colors. So white and black. And from here, you can hit this little arrow guy here to flip between these colors, or you can use X on your keyboard to flip between these colors. What I would like to do here is just to, if I have anything that I want to fix, you want a little bit of a fuzzy brush. I'm going to go about 75%. And what you can do is you can paint on this, okay? So anything that you paint in black is going to bring the color back because it that's going to take remove it from your black and white adjustment layer, okay? So if I wanted to, if I wanted to bring something back, in fact, I can see a little bit here that I want to fix. Oh, let's get rid of that. Okay, I'm going to zoom in. You can see some coloration here in the middle that I don't want there. Um, I would actually want to paint that white. So I'm going to hit X on my keyboard. So it flips, so I have white in my foreground. I'm going to change my brush size. And I can paint that out. Again, you want to be selecting your layer mask here to do that. Okay. Likewise, I can paint things back in. So I'm going to hit X. I'm going to fix this. It looks like I'm missing a little bit of gold here. And I mean, when we're getting in super close, like we're doing pixel by pixel here. But to do a crisp selection here, that's what we have to do. Okay. We got a little bit of weirdness happening over here. I'm going to go a little bit fuzzier with my brush. Okay. And I have black. So we're going to bring back some color here. I just want to get rid of that harsh edge there, okay? But I don't want to bring back skin tone, okay? Same thing. I'm going to flip it back to black. And you can see that I'm starting to get some hair back in here too. So I'm going to fix that. I'm going to go back to white. And again, it goes black and white on things. Okay. And if I really wanted to get at it, I can go really fuzzy brush. Nope, even fuzzier than that. Control Z. Oh, Control Z changes my brush. I want that. Okay. Let's come back out. That looks pretty good. Okay. So there we go. That's one way to do it is with the quick selection tool. Okay. Now I'm going to go back to it. I'm going to go revert back. I'm going to show you a second way how to do this. So I'm going to hit file revert. And we're going to go back to our original picture. Okay. There we go. Now on this one, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go straight up. I'm going to do black and white adjustment layer immediately. Okay. So it goes all black and white. So in this case, what I can do is I can go back to my brush, again, black and white. Anything that you paint in black is going to bring back the color. And you can just do it this way too, okay? It's a little bit less exact, but sometimes that's what you need. Sometimes you don't want to be... You want to, you want to have a little bit more control over it, okay? That way you get your fuzzy edges just the way you want them. You have control over the whole process, but there we go. Okay. You see, as I paint more black, it all comes in. Okay. Okay. That's a pretty easy way to do it too. Again, doing it this way, when you have little smaller areas, you want to clean that up. Again, switching back to your white and cleaning up any imperfections that you see there. You see there's quite a bit, okay? So that's another way we can do it. Now, so that's if you're going to be dealing with just one object. And, and honestly, that works really well if you're just doing one object and that object has multiple colors because you're in control of what actually shines through, okay? Now, I wanna show you another way where let's say, for example, um, there was a lot of the same color that I wanted to shine through. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and open up a new photo, file open, and I'm going to open up 
this photo right here. Okay. Now this photo here, what I want to do with this is I want all the orange to shine through. Okay. Now, if I were to do this the other way that we just did it, if I hit black and white and I start painting things back in, it's going to take me forever, right? Because I got to paint each individual fish and worry about like getting the blue back out of it. It's that's a nightmare. You don't want to do that. So I'm going to go back, file, revert. And this is kind of a new way that we've done this. Okay. So we're going to go up to select up here in the top menu select and we're going to choose color range okay now select color range what we're going to do here is we're going to make some selections here in our photo and it's going to select everything that is that color so i'm going to select this orange okay now i can go over here and hit this plus to add different values of orange okay so i'm going to click around i'm going to get a lot of these different orangey colors I think I just hit a black, so that's why you saw it freak out. I'm hit control. Hit minus. I'm going to take that black back out. Okay. I'm going to actually hit cancel on this. I'm going to start this one over again. Let's go back, select, color range. Localized color cr uh, clusters, orange. We're going to add orange, 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 orange. Okay. We've got our oranges. You actually see all the oranges being selected here. You can go through, you can select some more. Once we have what we like, we're going to hit OK. And you can see that select all the oranges. Okay. Pretty neat. Then from here, what we're going to do is we're going to hit the black and white. Okay. Now it's going to turn all those oranges that we selected black and white. If you need to go back through, you can undo this. Uh, Control D to deselect and go back through the color uh, selection process. But again, what we're going to do is Control I to inverse. And then what's going to do is going to let that orange shine through and black and white the rest of it. Okay. Now you can see there's obviously, I missed some oranges in here. I can go back through and select more oranges to make those pop a little bit more. Or I can go through with my brush. Again, smaller brush. Black is going to let it shine through, and I can click on these. And you can see I missed that really bright orange color. That's okay. You can just go back through and fix them all. All right. There we go. So that's what you would do if you want to select a lot of different objects that are the same color. Okay. Um, this would work well, like say, for example, if you were taking a picture of uh, like a, a, a garden and you want a certain type of flower to be color, the color to shine through, you wouldn't want to paint each and every one of those colors. Okay. Um, this will also work well, like Christmas lights. Uh, Tis the season, right? Um, so if you want those Christmas lights to shine through, you can do that. Uh, use the color range, select those, and then I'll quickly select everything that's in that color range. Okay. So anyway, there's a couple different ways to do it. When you're all done, what I'm going to ask for you to do here is hit file. When your photo is completely done, file, export, quick export as PNG. Okay. And then you're going to go ahead and save that. And that's what you're going to end up turning into Google Classroom. Okay. So the assignment, I'm going to ask you to do this to four separate photos. I want you to choose four objects in four photos and apply this selective color format, okay? Um, but I'm excited to see what you guys come up with. All right, have fun, guys.